Hi, I'm Nigel Griffiths, I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. In this active memory sharing movie, we're going to look at some simple monitoring of just a few logical partitions using the shared memory. This is the configuration that we set up in the AMS setup movie. We've got three logical partitions that are going to be using the shared memory pool and one using dedicated memory. So here's my HMC. I'm going to use this machine called Silver. It's a 520. It's got four CPUs and 16 gigabytes of memory. In that I have a virtual I.O. server that will of course be using dedicated memory. And I've got a logical partition up here, number two, and that's going to be using dedicated memory as well. It's got an ID, a logical partition ID of one. These three here, three, four, and five, are going to be using the shared memory pool. And they also just happen to have a logical partition ID of three, four, and five. That makes things easier. And let's have a look at what the pool is currently set to. It is a property of the entire machine, so we have to select the machine here. We go to configurations, virtual resources here. There's the shared processor pool, and here's the shared memory pool. So the pool size is 4 gigabytes. I can extend that up to 12. Can't actually do that on this machine at the moment because other dedicated memory partitions are taking up the memory, but we could grow that up by 2.2 uh, gigabytes. We select here the paging spaces. So here are the devices that I've named on my VIO server so that they are going to be used for AMS paging. Now I just happen to call the logical volumes that I'm using in this case AMS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's my naming convention. Of course, it's recommended that we use um, LUNs on a fiber channel disk subsystem for extra performance, but I've kept it simple here. They're actually connected, the three here are connected to my three logical partitions, 3, 4, and 5. You can't uh, dictate which uh, logical partitions gets connected to which the device. Now that I've logged on to the VIO server, I could have logged on to one of the other partitions and I'm running Topaz uh, minus capital C. And we can see here's the VIO server and LPAR2. These guys have two gigabytes of memory each, but we can see they're at the top now. There has no physical memory in here. These are dedicated. When we say they've got two gigabytes of memory, they really do have two gigabytes of memory. Um, three and four here both have two gigabytes of memory but in this case it's logical memory Now remember the pool size was four gigabytes and the two plus two will fit in the pool so we have no pressure on AMS to do any paging at all yeah it can just give the full two gigabytes to those two logical partitions and now start up the the fifth LPAR5 partition and of course then we'll have six gigabytes of logical memory that will not fit in the four gigabytes in the shared memory pool so give me a second, I'll come back. I'll just activate that. We can see here now that uh, 3 and 4, using the shared pool, have been asked to give up some memory to let the new logical partition have some. This is AMS asking for loaned memory from the logical partitions, in this case AIX. Once the logical partition has started, we can then use the uh, Topaz minus C to actually see how much memory it's got. Now I'll restart uh, the Topaz minus C here. Um, in 10 minutes or so it will actually find that new logical partition, but I can uh, force that by actually restarting it now. Okay, we can see the new partition here, 
and the memory has been split between these logical partitions. If we let them run for another 10 minutes or so, you'll find they actually get to fairly close having the same amount of memory each. Now, in this case, my logical partitions here are not doing uh, much at all, so there's no high demand on memory, and AMS will just move the memory between the logical partitions and even them out. In the next phase, I'm going to start running some workload on one of the logical partitions, and it starts demanding memory, and we should be able to see it stealing that or getting that loaned uh, from its peer logical partitions. Okay, in LPAR4, which is sitting at the bottom at the moment, I'm going to run an application that's going to grab uh, nearly 2 gigabytes of memory. So let me just start that off now. We can see it continue to go up, and the other two logical partitions slowly loaning more memory to help out their... Uh, here, logical partition. So we're in cooperation mode here. Now in a more realistic example when we have a lot more logical partitions and they're all running workloads rather than my idle ones here with one busy we'll see that each of the logical partitions would be competing for memory when it touches pages demanding more memory in and having to loan out memory if some other logical partition has more pressure on memory and uh, needs it. We also note that the memory moves over a period of time. We don't want the AMS to kick in and suddenly panic and start flushing gigabytes of memory out into its uh, paging spaces, um, only to find that one second later, oh, we didn't actually need it, and then have to page out a whole lot of other things to bring them back in. So we want it to flow the memory between the logical partitions I've just noticed here that we now got up to the two gigabytes that we're entitled to. So AMS will now back off. This logical partition has all the memory it actually can demand. Any more paging that's required will actually be done at the AIX level if it's got to maintain more virtual memory than physical memory as it has its maximum. I can, of course, go into the HMC and increase the size of the pool if we were doing too much uh, paging in our VIO server. And we should uh, monitor our VIO server to, to see what's going on. Or I could actually increase the logical memory given to this logical partition. I could change that up to uh, perhaps 3 gigabytes, and it would, in this case, loan more memory as it's the only one under high pressure of memory from its other logical partitions. Now I've stopped the workload on this uh, LPAR4 and you can see at the top here I had 2 gigabytes of memory and I'm starting to run workloads on other logical partitions and we can see this logical partition giving up memory in here slowly increasing the amount of uh, loaning that it's doing and it's actually using less memory. I've stopped the workload on this particular machine to free up some memory. And I've cut out a couple of minutes there of monitoring this. We can see now it's gone down to about one and a half gigabytes of memory um, here, and it's loaned nearly half a gigabyte. If we look at the global view here now, we can see LPAR3 is busy running a workload, again demanding memory. And we've split out the memory that we have in our pool across our logical partitions based on demand. In a much larger machine with more logical partitions, we'd be looking down here to see where our memory currently is. We'd have to be looking at 
the VIO server to see um, how much paging it's doing to the paging devices, the AMS paging devices, and we'd also have to have a look at um, the AIX on each of our logical partitions to see how much paging they're actually doing as well. Well that is simple monitoring. In the next movie we'll look at a more complicated example when we have all three logical partitions using memory quite a lot and we'll look at who's paging and try and explain why they're paging.